Well, I wonder how many of you read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. No, it was a funny book. It was a fashionable book when it came out and many of us read it and I wrote notes in my copy and I lent it to somebody and they gave it back and I lent it to somebody else and they may have given it back or they might not have done but whatever I can't find it now but for many of us Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance was possibly the nearest we ever got to philosophy you know we didn't all read Socrates and all that sort of stuff or Descartes but I wonder what philosophy we actually follow. I've got a feeling that many of you have a very similar philosophy to myself. And I've just been doing a little job. I've just been putting up a couple of little shelves just to solve an immediate problem for me. And the wood that I used came from packing crates and I was looking round for some little short screws and I went to my little short screw box and I'd got great big long ones in there and I was struggling a little bit and then my eyes fell on a little bag with little short screws in, exactly the right size that I wanted. Now, so what you're saying? But some of you are saying, oh, get on with it, Harry. Some of you are saying, boring, and you're clicking and you're going and looking at Waylon Wire's latest attempts to cold start a, a square body. Yeah, whatever a square body might be. But... There's a story to this little packet of screws. I used to work at a place very near to where Bob had his boat. And we had a big car park that was used by staff and by customers. And some people used it just to drop off their loved ones or their workmates or whatever. And one day, a chap spoke to me and said, here, you work here, don't you? Um, hmm. Here is certainly true, but work, well, I suspect there's a few people wonder about that. And I said, yes, I, I work here. And he said, you'd better go and have a look at your car park, mate. Oh, all right. He said, someone's chucked a load of screws all over the place. I don't know if they're trying to give everyone punctures. Well, I went and looked. And I don't think anyone had thrown them. My impression is that somebody had got out of a van, you know, a carpenter or something, and had probably dropped a box and they'd spread everywhere and no doubt he was running for a train or to buy a newspaper or whatever it was that he was doing there so I went round and I I picked up all of these screws to prevent staff and customers getting punctures and I've been lugging this bag of screws round with me for the best part of 10 years and it's true to say that it's nowhere near as full as it once was. But isn't that one of our philosophies? We keep things in case they come in handy. And every time we move them, we, we curse them and we say, oh, I ought to throw them away, I'm never going to use them. So it's one of our little triumphs in life when one day maybe 10 years later we look round for something to use for a job and there we are we've got them i've got a feeling that that's a philosophy common to many of you you've all shown me your workshops you don't all look like the sort of people who throw things away very often anyway 
enough of that. I've got things to do. Have you noticed when you take all the weeds out of a bed, you turn around and there's weeds back in the bed? Well, I've used some screws that I've carried for 10 years, ever since I found them in a car park. Now it's time to find a piece of wood to make the actual shelf. And some of you will remember that a gentleman very kindly gave me a lot of firewood. So, of course, I don't go to the shops and buy a bit of wood. Not if I can help it. I go to the firewood pile and I find that I've got this wonderful board here with some ivy clinging to it and yeah that's the right size to make a shelf out of a nice posh shelf to go in the house where everyone will see it and will say that's an interesting shelf all right they won't they'll say where are your clean cups and I'll say they're on the shelf but you know, bear with me for a moment. Well, we start by cutting the board between all the big horrible knots. Now, the knots would have created structural weaknesses in the shelf, which is going to carry plates and things. Now, plates can be heavy, and if you drop them off a shelf, they tend to... Uh, stop being plates. So I cut between some big knots and this is big enough for what I want but I really ought to draw some lines on it so that I know what I'm doing. So of course we're going to use a square to draw some lines with, a square made in 1940 that I've been lugging about for a while yeah, yeah. Are you getting the philosophy yet? Well, there we are. That's the shelf. What I'm going to do next is going to make a lot of noise and a lot of dust, but it involves a belt sander. You remember the belt sander that I bought? We're going to take this horrible, dirty old piece of board and we're going to turn it into something looking like a nice shelf. Just to prove that I'm not cheating, this is the halfway through the job. This is a dusty job. Belt sanding old timber. Uh, yeah, the, the dust. Dread to think what the dust is. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and finish this later. Oh, there we are. One shelf. Few coats of varnish and no one will know that this is a bit of firewood. Of course, it hasn't lost its opportunity, you know. When I eventually get round to completely remodelling the kitchen, this may well become firewood. Who knows? But what it's going to have now is a lot of varnish to seal it.